Yesterday I did a live stream unboxing both of these printers as well as an AnyCubic washing cure station. So over here I have the original AnyCubic Photon. This is the original screen, the original case as you see. Uh, they have done a hardware update on this one. I found out when I went to do a firmware update. Uh, but overall, same basic hardware as the original with, I think, a new main board. Now over here, we have the brand new AnyCubic Photon Mono X. This is obviously bigger build volume. It has the newer monochrome display, which is going to extend the display life as well as cure the resin faster. Uh, it, it's got a lot of just upgraded features if you're new to resin printing. Now, First of all, I am new to resin printing, so I'm no way an expert in this. I watch a lot of videos though, and that's where I get most of my information. First of all, I would like to say thank you to everyone in the live stream yesterday. You helped me through some of the printing on these. I have done uh, unboxing and printing on one other printer, but this was my second and third printer. So I really appreciate the help from the community getting these out of the box and getting them going. Now, on the Photon, I was able to get the first test print off of here that actually came on the USB stick that it came with. And uh, overall, they look pretty good. They're not perfect, but as I learned, this print is actually designed to dial in the uh, curing time for the resin you have in there. I didn't know that at first. I just thought it was a test print, but again, they came off just fine. Now, after that, I did go on to try to print a Benchy, which I originally got but I will let the videos you're about to see sort of walk you through what happened after that. But on the Photon Mono X, the test print it came with, which was a Hypercube, it did not come off correctly. I tried multiple times printing that Hypercube and I ended up trying two different filaments. Uh, nothing was working for me there. So what I ended up having to do was then go in and slice my own model and Eventually, <laughs> I did get a Benchy off of this one as well. But uh, again, I wanted to let the little videos that I shot sort of speak for themselves and you can see how I walked through my process. Uh, I was gonna post those on social media and I did post some of them on Twitter, but I figured I originally did this stream on YouTube. This is where it will reach the most people. So I'll let you watch those videos uh, and then I'll come right back and just give you my impressions of the two machines after only about 24 hours of using them. So the first thing I wanted to share with you was a couple of photos of a big resin spill that I had soon after the failure on the Photon Mono X. So what happened here was I wasn't sure that the Ziltec filament was working correctly, so I just wanted to pour it back into the container and try a different resin. But unfortunately, the funnel I had did not sit on the narrow neck that that uh, Ziltec bottle has and it tipped over on me and all of the resin that was still in the funnel poured out all over the table and went rolling around everywhere. Luckily I was wearing my gloves and I did have paper towels handy and I was able to get all this cleaned up but it probably took a good half hour to get cleaned up properly. and this was not a pleasant part of the experience and this is one of the downfalls to resin because obviously this is not something that will ever happen with a hard you know spool of filament so keep that in mind when working with resin that this can happen you need to be prepared for this uh, maybe be a little bit safer and work with a little bit more room than i had and you can prevent this from happening a real quick note on these next video clips overall i'm pretty happy with the quality of these clips but some of the ones where I was holding the phone with the rubber gloves, I have some really bad audio. I apologize for that. I will watch that in the future. So I'm still having bad adhering problems on the Mono X, unfortunately. As you can see, I've got something here, and I'm assuming there's something down in there that's attached to the film, but it's still not printing with that default print. And this is my second print over on this printer, and you can tell there's the base of a Benchy, but once again, did not stick to the build platform. Uh, I know I've leveled and re-leveled these without any problems, but I'm still getting poor bed adhesion, and I'm not 100% sure why. Both of these are different uh, resins. This is the Saint Smart, or actually, this is the Saint Smart, and then this is a different brand. I forgot at the moment, but anyway. Let's keep trying. 
So, at least on the regular photon, I see what the problem was. I was trying to print a benchy, and as you can see, it just at some point couldn't adhere at any point. Um, I don't really know why it gave up when it did. That's kind of odd. But I did notice that there were two little leftover pieces from the previous print that I did not know were there because I did not completely empty the, the vat. And these little two little failures that came off that should have been there, and I completely missed that. So this very well could be a bed leveling issue that somehow got away with it for a little while and then finally gave up. So that's not going to be a big deal. Uh, I'm just going to try it again, and hopefully this one will come out. This one, still getting the same sort of thing I was getting before, just not coming, just, just not working at all. So I just had AnyCubic send me some settings, and I'm going to give those a try on this printer. So here's my update on the photons this morning. So after a quick tip from 3D Print Tech on Twitter, I am getting success over here. Basically what he told me was that I needed to um, actually use the supports, uh, change the area that was contacting the film so that it you know, stays relatively less than the uh, contact area of the build plate and what that does is make it where it's easier to pull off of the film and so as you see here I'm getting my first successful print at least you know cross my finger hope hope it finishes off of the mono X this one's looking really good but the same thing cannot be said for the regular photon which still failed now I do have something on the build plate and I'm sure I have something stuck to the film down there so Still need to reslice this one. It's possible my settings aren't quite right on the regular Photon, where maybe I finally got them dialed in on the Mono X. They're different printers. They require different settings. And uh, I'm still learning resin. I'll, I'll get there on this, but there we are. So it looks like I have my first successful print on the Mono X. And it looks pretty good. There's some weird strings hanging down I'm going to have to take a look at. But overall, it looks like a benchy. I'll have to get this off of here, uh, get it into the wash and cure, and we'll take a look. Okay, so let's wash a benchy. There's the benchy in my denatured alcohol. So let's put this on wash mode. And we're going to put it on, I like four minutes on wash, and let's hit start. And we've got agitation. And there we go. So we'll do that for four minutes, and then we'll do curing. Looks good. And we got a nice whirlpool in there. Alright, now we're going to do about four minutes on the cure. And we'll take a look at our results. I did leave it uh, out for a few minutes after it came out of the wash. That also let me take off most of the support. So maybe some nibs on there still, but uh, four minutes and we'll see what it looks like. So let's talk about this first print off the mono. Um, the surfaces are immaculate. Um, they're super, super smooth. I did have anti-aliasing on on this one, I believe, which helps move things out even more, but I can't feel any layering. Um, I don't think you'd know this was 3D printing. Uh, you can see on the top here, no real layering there. Absolutely gorgeous. And there is a, a small butt though. And that's the bottom of this print. The bottom of this print is pretty atrocious. Um, just does not look good. And that is a mix of the supports and uh, probably some setting tuning that could still be done for this particular resin. So I think I'm going to do that. I would love to get this bottom layer tuned correctly. I'm going to do my research like I usually do. Uh, but overall I'm happy. I got a print off the mono, which means that it will print. Uh, thanks to AnyCubic for their tweets because that helped me get this far. So, um, moving on to the next print, we'll see how it goes. And now the settings are all dialed in on the regular photon, it seems, because it looks like we've got a successful benchy on this printer as well. Looks really nice. So, let me get this one off, clean it up, and take a look at see how it looks. So here's the print, uh, cleaned, but not fully cured. It shouldn't affect my skin, just in case you were worried about me, uh, since it has been cleaned off of any liquid resin. 
as you can see, this one did pretty good. Probably not quite as well as the mono did. As you can see, some of the front supports did not make it. Um, and I see, we'll have to see after it's cured, but I see some lines here on the model that I don't see on the mono, but that also could be the color. But just a little, a little lines there you can see. Just not quite perfect. Um, but after this dries, I will get it fully cured and we'll take one last look at it. All right, so here is the print that came off of the regular Photon. And it looks pretty good. Uh, it doesn't look quite as clean as the one off the Mono, but it's not exactly the same resin or the same color. So comparison is not apples to apples. Uh, it definitely still has the same problem that the other one does in terms of just the messy bottom. I'm going to have to fix that on both of these. The layers on it, the layers on the cabin look really good. You can definitely see the stepping there, but that's not a big deal. It's still very smooth. Uh, extremely smooth on the top. No problems there. Uh, under here, as we get closer to the bottom, it looks a bit melty. And I think that that is still just not the resin being dialed in correctly. So, again, a little work to do on here, but a successful print, just like on the other printer. So as you can see, that first 24 hours was um, probably more exciting than I wanted it to be. I was hoping that these would be more out of the box, put the resin in them, get them to go. But uh, as with any new type of technology that you're not used to, and I'm not used to resin as much as I am, obviously, the filament printing. And I'm definitely not used to any cubic machines because these are my first two from any cubic. So this was a new experience for me. I did learn, you know, give yourself some space with when working with resin because that was my problem with my big resin spill was I just didn't have enough room to work and I was not paying attention the way I should have. Uh, always safety first, as you knew, and as I demonstrated in the stream, keep your gloves on when you're working with this stuff uh, because in the event that something unfortunate or just unexpected happens, you want to be prepared to be able to clean up that mess without having to find gloves or just giving up on it and then potentially harming yourself. So um, as for the machines themselves, I have to say, you know, just like with any machine, I am pretty sure I'm going to be able to get these tuned in. I know there's a lot of resources out there. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm dealing with here is just tuning, I believe, at this point because I am getting prints off of it now. So as I showed, both of these are having underside issues that I'm going to have to work out. Um, and Overall, I think the print quality is better on this guy so far, but again, without more tuning, I really can't say that because until you get them tuned in just right, I don't think you can really compare the results. Uh, they, you know, It's a machine, it's a tool, you have to learn how to use it correctly. But I am happy, just after 24 hours, I am getting some results off the machines. Uh, I was also extremely happy with the wash and cure station it's an extremely easy way to clean and wash, uh, clean and cure your prints, particularly if they're going to fit. Uh, this machine, the platform goes straight into the wash and cure, and so the washing is even easier, and it cleans your platform for you, which is super nice. Uh, I do hope that they release a larger wash and cure for something like this because, again, I think it saves a step that involves you potentially, you know, getting resin on you or you know, it's just cleaner when you can just take the whole platform and put it in there. But either way, I was able to take off my Benchy off here, put it in the basket that came with the wash and cure, and uh, I was able to do that really easy. I'm really happy with the finish of both of these. Now, I use two different resins on these. I use the same Smart Rapid UV printer resin on this guy. Uh, again, produced print straight out of the bottle. And on this one, I have the eSun Bio-based resin. And again, I'm really happy with the quality of this print overall. So uh, the you may have seen in the stream, I also use some Ziltec resin. I don't have any answers uh, to how well it's going to perform since I did learn that it was not the resin causing me issues on this printer. It definitely was the setting. So I still need to retry that Ziltec uh, resin to actually see how it performs. And I think that's about it. I have a lot of testing to do on these. I'm not going to put out reviews until... I am comfortable that I know how to use them correctly and that uh, I'm representing them fairly. So 
you've got a little while before you see uh, full reviews of these. And again, I just I want to be upfront about my experience level before I give you my my full opinion on these. So uh, again, these were not sponsored in any way. I purchased both of these units as well as the uh, Wash and Cure Station directly off the AnyCubic website when they became available. Uh, I think that they're still running an excellent sale on the original Photon with the Wash and Cure Station for under $300 or this is like 170 by itself and the Wash and Cure is like 130 by itself, something around there. I'm going to include links in the description where you can buy them directly from AnyCubic. I currently do not have any sort of deals with them or an affiliate program. I will also link to uh, my Amazon uh, affiliate program and I do earn revenue from those purchases, which is I think all I'm allowed to say about that. So if you want to purchase from either of those locations, please give it a go, take a look. Um, I'm overall really happy. Oh, one more thing. I'm really happy with AnyCubic. So I was posting my results on Twitter. They reached out to me. They're the ones that provided the settings here that was able to get this one printing correctly. So thank you to AnyCubic for their time, for taking the time to reach out and sending me their settings, which helped me along here. So thanks again. Thanks for watching the live stream. If you either caught it live, if you caught it in post or just watched pieces of it, I appreciate you taking a look at that. Thanks for watching this sort of catch up video. And I hope this was useful and helpful. Let me know what you think about the cell phone video format that I did here. The cell phone uh, does a pretty good job on video. It's obviously not this quality, but it does a pretty good job and it allows me to quickly get down my thoughts and my ideas without having to pull out the camera setup. Uh, plus it's a lot easier to take video with one hand with the camera, uh, excuse me, with the phone. So let me know what you think about that. Is the phone footage all right? Is it good enough for, for sort of these quick shots that you may see? I've, I've been using it back here for another project and you may see some of that on social media as well as in a future video. Just let me know your thoughts. I do like the audio on that, it works really well. So again, thanks. I will see you next time in my next full review.